Hey everyone, I'm Zachary Wolf, a senior writer here for CNN Politics. I'm in for David Chalian. I write the What Matters newsletter for CNN. Please do subscribe to that and subscribe to this podcast. David's out till March, so prepare to hear from some new voices like mine in the podcast in the coming weeks. This is the CNN Political Briefing. Here's what you need to know in politics for Tuesday, February 15th. It doesn't matter if you live in North Dakota, New York, or North Carolina, Everybody in the U.S. should be paying attention to this recall election that could cost three San Francisco school board members their jobs on Tuesday night. What caused the backlash? CNN's Greg Krieg has been covering this for CNN, and he notes that the board was focused on changing the names of 44 public schools early in the pandemic at a time when students weren't in school. And then San Francisco kept their COVID restrictions and their closure uh, of the schools much longer than most schools in the country. Even in this liberal enclave of San Francisco, it created a huge backlash to the school board. And there's this kind of national narrative now where school boards are turning into these kind of crucibles for frustration, particularly with the government and local governments, and that bleeds into national governments and state governments over COVID. Listen to these two parents. These are the parents that started the recall. And while they're from San Francisco and they're talking about a very specific San Francisco issue, I think you could apply this frustration to many parts of the country where students weren't in school for the better part of a year or more. Even as late as Feb 2021, not a single school site was ready for reopening. These individuals are using this as an opportunity to create you know, media attention and controversy so they can you know, improve their careers rather than focus on educating our kids. The fundamental thing you have to do in, as an elected official is serve the people that you're meant to serve. This recall, it's, it's not a small thing. There's a ton of fundraising pouring into this thing. Organizers, the recall effort, they've gotten nearly $2 million. Defenders of the school board members have only raised $86,000. If that's any indication, I think these school board members have something to worry about Tuesday night. CNN's Ron Brownstein, who is one of the smartest people writing about politics, has a really smart take on this at the website today. And he sees this kind of cocktail of three distinct things driving this effort in, in San Francisco. Number one, there is a genuine grassroots discontent over extended school closings during the coronavirus outbreak. Number two, he says there is a growing division between Democrats and progressives over how to respond to the pandemic. And that's true as well. And number three, he says there's massive funding from longtime critics of public education and some big supporters of Republican political campaigns. These are people like um, allies of former Education Secretary Betsy DeVos. But Brownstein goes on and he says that this frustration over COVID restrictions might have started this, but it's now masking something that's kind of bigger and happening across the country, particularly in red states that will affect curriculums in schools. So people are frustrated with school boards because their kids weren't in school and the backlash could now affect what their kids are taught. And this has nothing to do with COVID. Republicans, he says, are trying to censor how public school teachers talk about race, gender, sexual orientation, and other sensitive topics. Brownstein looks at this most recent CNN national poll from last month. It found that education as an issue is soaring to the top or near to the top of the issues that are important to people heading into the November election. But the issue of curriculum is not as big. After watching school board frustrations near my own house here in Virginia, I think Brownstein and the polling are correct. The parents are concerned with their kids learning more than they're fired up over what's in the curriculum. But I think it's important to note that In San Francisco, there was a dissonance between the school board thinking about renaming these 44 schools over social justice issues at the same time that students were out of school. So while I think it's true that the curriculum issue is drafting behind the COVID issue, there's clearly, even in San Francisco, you can go too far. It's almost like they overshot that mandate to bring social justice into the, into the school board and uh, are, are paying the price for it now. San Francisco is its own special political universe, but there's also 
the dropping of COVID restrictions nationally to consider, particularly around masks and masks in schools. This is something that's been happening in a lot of states recently, in blue states. The Republican pollster Kirsten Soltis Anderson sees a general COVID fatigue leading to a frustration with requirements, particularly for vaccines, but maybe also for masks, too. She says, quote, I don't know that deep blue area American political figures are rolling back such mandates because their own voters are specifically calling for such mandates to be rolled back. Rather, she says, they may just be responding to growing frustrations around the virus overall. People essentially are just going to have to live alongside the disease. She says her polling shows that most people are still actually worried about getting COVID and still probably going to do things to protect themselves, but they no longer think we can beat COVID. That sounds a lot like what New Jersey's governor said on CBS on Sunday. Every time you think you gotta figure it out, it humbles you. It Mm. takes a turn you don't expect. But as best we can tell right now, this thing is going Uh, from pandemic to endemic. That kind of leadership is coming at the state level and at the city level, but you won't hear that kind of thing from the national government right now. The CDC and the White House, at least, haven't updated mask guidance or vaccine guidance. It means the country is moving faster than its national government at the moment, and it means for local officials that they need to respond to the needs and wants of the people they represent. That's it for today's political briefing. I'm Zachary Wolf. Thanks so much for listening. If you want more of me and my political analysis, subscribe to the What Matters newsletter, where we try to connect the dots at this time of political, cultural, and economic upheaval. And please take a moment to be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll talk to you tomorrow.